is the heroic Dana Durnford, who is facing uh, the medieval legal system of his country, Canada, if you can call it that. We'll see how it goes. I'm not quite clear on everything yet, but uh, his right to free speech, my God, people get hot and they say things all the time. But the most important thing is what Dana has done in his expeditions to videotape underwater, to take photographs above water of the tide pools that are no longer tide pools in the sense that we know them as, they look like the moon. Just rocks, maybe eight to ten different kinds of species, mostly of flora, no animals, all gone, very few animals. And usually there's over 6,000. He calls the first 30, 40 feet of water depth from the shoreline, high tide line, the soup of, of life in the ocean. It's all gone. It's all dead. There's nothing there. There's no way for the ocean shoreline to be regenerated. It's gone. This is done, folks. It's a done deal. This is an extinction event for the Pacific Ocean. Look at the top of Rents. Read about Larry. Look at his video. Understand why the EPA has never thought enough of you or its alleged responsibilities to hold one single damn news conference to tell you the truth about the radioactivity that has flooded the North Pacific, killed virtually all the fishes, 3% of the tuna left, that's it, bags of bones that used to be called whales washing up on the shoreline, no food for them to eat, the Pacific Ocean is dead, it's gone. And this asinine government, this evil, horrible reptilian government wants to extend the lifespan of our nuclear power plants to 88 years. They are begging for more Fukushimas, begging, and they're going to get it. We had an enormous graph I put up about now a couple months ago. And off the coast of Oregon and Washington, it showed in colors the varying concentrations and how dense they were of radioactive nuclides. There was an enormous red eye, a red dot, a red circle off the coast of Oregon and Washington, maybe 500, 600, 700 miles, I'm not sure. And quite clearly, the North Pacific Current was pushing that red dot toward the Oregon coast. We had a report last week of 19,700 counts per minute recorded in Coos Bay, Oregon. Also, very high levels showed up in Phoenix, Oregon, Phoenix, Arizona. This stuff comes over here in cells, in the ocean, in the air, in the rainstorms, and it appears that they have let the curtain down a little bit and rain systems are beginning to show up. But when that red dot moved, and that's what it was, and hit the coast, we're talking about ungodly amounts of radiation. What will happen from it? Eventually, a lot of people are going to get sick and die. Very simple. No big mystery. Let's first welcome back uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Yoichi Shima. You read the headlines again, and... Uh, it, it's hard to believe that the American government cares so little, not just about the people here, but about the world, that it would try to allow these nuclear power plants, these horrible ways of boiling water and creating nuclear waste that has to be monitored and taken care of and watched for up to 100,000 years, that they would do that to the world by extending the useful life, supposedly, of these nuclear power reactors to 80 years? Uh, Yoshi, this is insanity. Yeah, well, it is technological insanity, because the piping, as we know, you know, from places like... Um, San Onofre? In uh, Southern California, San Onofre, all the pipes uh, and uh, valves and all, they, they wear out from the radiation and from the heat. The radiation, the constant bombardment of neutrons just knocks out the parts, the control system. Uh, 40 years is a long time. They're already all, uh, basically, they're all rusted out and destroyed within their 40-year lifetime. So extending them 
it is a guarantee for a government in, let's say, knowing uh, approval of of a sort of a mass of a mass kill off of, of a genocide. You know, I, I can't just think of industrial genocide. Can we use that word? We sure industrial can. Genocide? Yeah, it's yeah, yours. We saw something like that at Bhopal, you know, with the uh, yep. Union Carbide. Bhopal was there. horrible. Yes, absolutely. It's terrible for the victims, but that was an immediate small circle of victims. Yeah. What we're seeing is nuclear, the whole northern hemisphere being taken out. You know, I mean, we're talking about dozens of countries, you know, hundreds of millions, you know, a billion people being taken out, a couple billion people being knocked out. So this is a real genocide and ecocide. It's not a word that's used, you know, yet. I think we've used it to talk about the kill off of all life forms, both vegetation, uh, right. animals, lower level animals, and higher animals, higher mammals. You know, this, this, I'm not even sure this is a crime. It's not even criminal. Uh, it's not even considered a crime. I don't think before the Supreme Court or the World Court, you can kill off every species on Earth and get away with it. I think so you're I was right. I'm just trying to make a buck. I was just trying to make money. And, yeah. you know, my right to make money precedes, supersedes all life on Earth. And I can, I can exterminate everything. The Environmental yeah. Protection Agency doesn't seem to have a clause about ecocide. You know, you know let they me say. Let me. these small problems of toxic spills and all. Yeah. But if you knowingly, knowingly, you know, destroy all forms of life on Earth, it seems you can get away with it. We don't have a Nuremberg or Tokyo war crime trial for ecocide. That doesn't exist yet. No. Before this Fukushima disaster is over, we've got to make sure something like that is in place. We don't even have an international war crimes tribunal. And you know what bothers me? Let me jump. I'm going to take mm -hmm. a, a, a real quick turn into new area. We'll come right back. I think this species should be quarantined to this planet and not allowed to go to Mars. I don't think we no, deserve it. I absolutely it. agree with you. I mean, what, I mean, we, we, we've destroyed one planet. What, if we have license to destroy a thousand more? Uh, come on, you know? We don't even know if there's life on Mars. But if there is, we'll certainly destroy it. Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, it's, so, it makes me sick. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and as we speak now, this whole charade, this, this circuit that's been going on since the Kyoto... Uh, you know, the meeting in Kyoto of the uh, uh, the so-called climate change conference that's sponsored by the UN happening in Paris. Yeah. You know, Paris of this recent massacre, now they're doing another massacre in Paris. This is the second massacre. Yeah. This is the UN climate change panel. Yep. Which conveniently, it only talks about, you know, coal, right? Uh, the so-called fossil fuels, burning of coal. What they conveniently ignore is agribusiness. Agribusiness creates urea from petroleum projects. Uh, this replaces natural fertilizers. Agribusiness, therefore, can rely on chemicals. And you know the story about soil depth. Yeah. I went to school in Indiana. Yeah. Soil depth there used to be something like, you know, uh, uh, something like 10, 12, 20 feet down, black soil, organic matter in the soil. Oh, it was that gorgeous. That was all depleted within a century. Yeah. You know, this is how... They store, I mean, this is how nature stores carbon, carbon, they store, it's so, they store it in good soil, right? And we grow things in good, so organic farmers try to do that. Correct. Now, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's no mention at all about agribusiness methods that have removed all the organic matter from soil. They just sucked it up, sold it up. And, and what did they replace it with? <laughs> Herbicides, <laughs> pesticides, uh, heavy metals. Exactly. More carbon, no, more carbon-based chemicals, okay? They're releasing millions of tons of these chemicals on top of the earth, and this is not covered by these climate change clowns, you know? Where is their science? Where are the climate scientists on that? You know, where, you know what, they're all, what they're all doing? They're out there peddling TPP, you know, Trans-Pacific Partnership, to destroy the rest of whatever's left of organic farming. In, in Asia and in, in the Pacific Basin. You know, There's the been a war, a war declared on organic farming, period. Exactly, which means the soil gets depleted, all the carbon in that soil goes up into the atmosphere. So, so you know, even if one doesn't believe carbon is a, uh, you know, in the air is a big problem, one of the main sources, you know, has been agribusiness, and that's never mentioned by this phony baloney panel of the UN, you know, which is a paid arm of the nuclear industry. That's all it is. They're just providing cover for nuclear. That's all they're doing. I agree. Dana? 
hey, you know, Yoshi nailed it. And on top of that, in um, Paris, what they're doing is what they're, they're trying to agree upon. Everybody thinks this is about climate, this or climate, that. But what the big uh, push is to get everybody to say that nuclear is carbon free. And so that's what the, that, that, that oh, is. That, is that their new buzz phrase? Yeah, that's what it's all about. And they're trying to get everybody to come on board. And what that means is now everybody has to use nuclear to mitigate uh, so-called climate change. This is what this is all about. So pushing nuclear everywhere. And we've seen the posturing for Cambodia, for Egypt, for all kinds of impoverished countries all of a sudden are being promised huge sums of money. If they just take nuclear, you just got to take it, and then everything will be okay. And, of course, everybody knows that fable. Uh, so it's a desperation uh, move. It can't work. And claiming that they're going to build nuclear power plants all over the planet is not going to work. Uh, you know, like Yoshi knows, you knows, in less than a year, there won't be any whales left. And so uh, Japanese saying they're going to go out and go whale hunting is part of that propaganda machine to try to keep that law alive a little bit longer. Of course, that, that can't pan out because we know now definitively the ocean has died and it didn't recede the coastline. So that means that's symmetrical now throughout the countries in the Pacific Rim nations. And, and but uh, obviously this is what it's all about. This is what they're saying, actually saying in the big media is that they want all countries to come on board and start using nuclear. And so that's why they arrested me most likely because my narrative where I was live streaming every day was going to clash 100% with the theory that we should have nuclear everywhere. Right. And so they're talking about small uh, nuclear modular nuclear reactors is another key word to shove out there. But Yoshi uh, nailed the daylight out of it is that we got to get uh, some kind of a revolution on the go here where we, we can have a conversation. So like a revolution to have a conversation. How... How far out of the realm is that supposed to be for somebody? Our civilization, we can create lasers and we can create cell phones and satellites and planes and just incredible amounts of just wonderful, I think, things. Yeah. <laughs> but we can't come up with a solution or can't admit that we got an I issue. Well, the, the uh, solution to the issue is to, for God's sakes, extend the life of these nuclear death plants to 80 years. That's the most insane thing I have ever seen since the advent of nuclear power plants. We know they're rotting. We know they have cracks in their reactors. We know the containment doesn't work. We know they release every single day yeah. nuclear energy into the atmosphere called radioactive nuclides. We know this. It's a fact. And they're going to push it for 80 more years. Rather than shut all the sons of bitches down, I'm sorry, shut them all down. I just can't stand this insanity on this planet. Shut them down. We don't well, need absolutely, them. Absolutely. Absolutely. What we're talking about, you know, nuclear physicists and all, they pose as the great geniuses. What we found out since Fukushima, these are not scientists. These are high priests of ignorance of scientific ignorance who can't face the facts of their own very corrupted pseudoscience, nuclear physics. They can't handle the basic problem that they caused at Fukushima, Chernobyl. You know, they can't cap the problem. They don't know what they're doing. And I think we've just got to call it spade a spade. This is a nuclear lobby that's self-preserving, has enormous power in the UN. The UN was created because of the atomic bomb, you know, that was supposed to end all wars. And we've had dozens, hundreds of wars sense of formation you and so they've absolutely failed their promises have failed the other, the other thing that dana points out uh, i think that we have to remember is that every nuclear plant needs a dedicated thermal coal burning plant to supply its water pumps when it's down so nuclear comes with a cost in carbon it is not carbon free nuclear waste you know it wastes coal it, it, it consumes enormous Correct. amounts of coal yeah. just to keep itself going and so that coal energy isn't going to schools, hospitals, or wherever. It's going to keep a nuclear plant going. How absurd the whole premise of this game is. Not science. This is a false illusion of coal. It's well, what you, what, coal. Yeah. What you said about them not knowing what they're doing, uh, Jeffrey Immelt, the GE big shot, went over to Fukushima, took a look at it. God knows how close he really was. Probably had binoculars. 
and said to the Japanese people, don't worry, we're going to rebuild Fukushima Daiichi and get it back online. What a lunatic. Yes. We should, we should hold them to that promise. We should make them break ground there. <laughs> every actor, yeah, every fix actor it. To one and two. Fix is, it, uh, ML. Yeah, fix it. Yeah, yeah. We should, we should make him keep his promise. Go back there and rebuild reactor one and two. Let's see him do it. Okay, let's see these geniuses of nuclear businesses address that problem. They all put their heads together in the world, and they walked away from Fukushima. That's what they've done. They've all walked, okay, and they want to build new plants instead and ignore the fact they can't deal with any. They can't deal with Chernobyl. They can't deal with Fukushima. And no, we're just sitting around here waiting yeah. for the third one to take out the northern hemisphere for good and end life, all life, all human life on Earth, both hemispheres. That's what we're waiting for. These maniacs. They really are murderous maniacs, is what they are. Yeah. And, uh, they, you know, I mean, and this is Dana's problem. You know, we call these guys murderous maniacs who have to be brought to justice for their crimes against the and, environment, and, against yeah. humanity. Yeah. And uh, they send the police after you. I mean, this is ridiculous. We're living in a dark age. This is a dark age when this kind of stuff happens. There's well, look, look aside, d- in, dark in age. Any of this. Absolute yeah. dark age. Look at the Middle East, Barbar- for God's sake. Nuclear barbarism. Yeah. That's what and we're talking about. Look at the Middle East. That's dark. the dark ages, if there ever were any. Yeah. Come on. Oh, this yeah. is all nuts. Yes. It's absolutely yeah, yeah. crazy. Dana, uh, come on in here. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you, folks. <laughs> That's what I mean, though. Anybody who's rational can look at this and say, you know, with a whole heart and be honest about it, that this is not a game and that the death of the Pacific Ocean is not something that is going to be tolerated. And so the posture they're doing now is what, I wonder, a last desperate cash grab? Is it a last desperate? It's a last desperate something because within one year, it's all in the bag. You can't hide it any longer. It just can't be hit any longer. So this is all posturing, I guess, is the way I see it. Yeah. Look, like you were talking about earlier, the organic side it is. That sustains all life, and that we replaced it all with genetically modified critters. Yeah. And look what we got done now, and now nuclear on top of us. And, and it's only a handful of people making these decisions. It's, 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 it's really isn't it amazing? That, yeah. It's, and getting it's away really with this. Amazing. Yeah. A handful not, of people. I'm not withdrawing any of my comments about a period. I stand by everything I've ever said. And, and we'll continue to do that, and the same as you guys, because this has gone crazy that they want to now uh, claim that this stuff is somehow magically carbon-free. Yoshi just eviscerated that one, and so did you over and over and over. And so why can't anybody else have a rational decision about where, this? Where has, uh, I have another question for both of you, where, where, really, where has the coverage, what little we had, of Fukushima gone? I never see it anywhere. None, not even in Japan. In fact, uh, Jeff, I missed the last show because I was in Japan, and as usual, my phone was cut off. Didn't get any, you know, overseas calls were blocked. The whole security apparatus is there, but they're doing nothing about Fukushima. I was uh, measuring the water. Uh, I was measuring, in fact, the watershed Uh around Tokyo's water supply, Lake Tama, large dam. Oh, yeah. Of course... Double the safety limit all around, all around. Uh, they're trying to build new sluices or something. I guess they're trying to drain some of the silt because the winds, uh, the winter wind uh, churns up the silt. So all the stuff that fell into the watershed from Fukushima uh, occasionally gets all, you know, in the turbulence of the water, gets all dredged up and goes to every household in Tokyo, you know, into their water supply, their drinking water. Absolutely. Their water, their, Oh, the bottom line is is simple. Uh, Tokyo should have been evacuated. It should still be evacuated. Yes, it should have been. It should be. They should pull out seventy million people out of northern Japan. It is just too radioactive to survive. Just a couple hours up there, you know. Once again, radiation burn on the arm. You're itchy all over for you got it, days eh? after Jeez. that. I, yeah. of course, eyes are burning and all that. You see a lot of people with all kinds of problems in Tokyo, especially under their eyes. They're like allergies, but obviously this is from radiation, you know, the radioactive isotopes in yeah. the water that yeah. they're exposed to. Uh, you know, people are dying. The city is a dying city. 
people there know that. I've talked to people. They know situation horrible. There's nothing they can do. They can't move out. They're stuck. And the government is, you know, instead trying to, you know, uh, intervene overseas and all that. Massive security alert in Tokyo, by the way. You know, the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, former Prime Minister Taro Abe, um, they befriended these Uyghurs from China and the Turks, the Grey Wolves from Turkey. And there's a lot of Turkish terrorists living in to- all across Japan. In fact, there's oh, really? a huge mosque. In, yeah, in Nagoya. Oh, yeah, these guys have patronized them since 1927. You know, for the, uh, they were part uh-huh. of the Greater East Co-Prosperity Movement uh, run by Japanese military intelligence, okay? Yeah, yeah. For nearly over 90 years now. Yeah. And so they, they gave these guys money, training, and God knows what else they've given them. And now there's not enough police in Tokyo because, you know, the city where the huge crowds congregate, remember the Tokyo subway gathering? 20,000 people were failed that morning, you know, were knocked out by gas that morning. Um, 20,000? Did you say 20,000? 20,000 people were affected by gas that morning. Most of them were knocked down to their, you know, on their flat on their back and had to be dragged out of the subway. Okay? They, yeah. Shinzo Abe, by the way, was involved with that group all along with the weapons smuggling, which was why the gas, the place was gas. Okay, yeah. so we got a terrorist prime minister, a, a, a clear-cut sponsor of terrorism. But now, just like George Bush and Dick Cheney, the terrorists are turning against Japan, and they can't protect the uh, capital. So you see, uh, you see in a few select places, highly visible, two police vans packed with special forces guys. But they can't cover everywhere else. In other words, the police, I guess they're pretty smart. They decided if they spread themselves, then you have two cops at every major corner. Instead, they try to concentrate so they're visible with their buses. But it's not going to fool the professional hitmen uh, that are coming over. And I know it's a lot of Arabs inside Japan that really, you know, at the beginning of winter, uh-huh. I was wondering, what all these Arabs? Uh-huh. And, and, uh, and also, you know, they're, they're these short Middle East-looking guys. Speaking Spanish, you know, you know they, they're obviously Arabs from Spain. What are they doing all across Japan? They're casing the place out for a massive uh, attack against the Japanese public. And Shinzo Abe, of course, he might actually benefit from that. Maybe, maybe he's you know he's going to he's going to encourage them to attack, you know, to, to uh, so that he has grounds for war. Just like uh, George Bush, 9/11, the whole thing, that whole standard program I got it. that yeah. the neocons have imposed, you know, the pro-Zionist neocons, uh, the, the whole operation. So Tokyo, people in Japan are really living. They're, they're, everyone knows there, there's this imminent threat. I mean, they're being hit from every side by their own government. Yeah, this is this is the ruling party. I mean, this is uh, just like 9/11. Wow, Dana, go ahead. Yeah, Japan has lost lost a battle. And politicians, just a handful of them, wrecked it for every other person, and then the entire planet on top of that. The nuclear industry has proliferated out bananas and potato chips and walking in sunshine to the point you can't have a conversation with anybody. So they've been at it a very long time, and now it's coming down to this. I think over the next, this year, in less than a year, hopefully, but over this year, that uh, majority of the planet is going to be wide awake. I really should believe that because we can't hide the depth of the Pacific any longer. The mass die-offs are, are the end of it. That's, that's the, the death throes of the Pacific Ocean. We documented everything. And so I think these governments are just one year away from utter chaos. And it doesn't have to be utter chaos. It really doesn't. I mean... It's time to admit it. At what point are we going to admit it? At some point, we're going to have to. And so when are we going to admit it? I guess it's, maybe with our dying breath. I think sooner than that, I hope. Uh, because I truly believe that, even though I don't truly believe as well, <laughs> but I, I hopefully truly believe that this planet is going to wake up in a good way and that we'll fight for something, whatever we can find to remain with. But this is an extinction event. Like you started to show off with there's no doubt about it. This is, uh, this is, there's no comparison. I mean, a war couldn't bring this on to us. Uh, conflict, we don't think could bring this, we never dreamt could, I should say, bring this on to us. Right. There's nothing we, we ever dreamt could do this to us. This was supposed to be the last refuge in case it all went bad. In case everybody went to war, we should have been able to go up and hide in those 26,000 islands, for instance. And now that's just in, 
incredibly void of all life, and that the, 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 the tax upon everybody, particularly me, are based upon keeping it uh, hid away for just a little tiny bit longer, whatever their master plan is, I don't know, but it's not going to work. There's no way it can work. People are, are too intelligent as they wake up and are like yourselves to become indignant. And we see that all the time. We just don't get that opportunity. And like you said earlier, it was buried in the news. You don't hear about it. And so it's just these shows like this here that's keeping it afloat. But the death of the system. We're it, uh, Dana. We're it. There's no. There's nobody else doing. There is not. No. The death of the Pacific uh, means all these streams are going to be extremely popular, and a lot of people will be grateful to have that. What What brings? What What is able to console you when there's something major happening? Is it's understanding it. When you can understand it or comprehend it, that helps you to deal with it. When you can't understand it. And when you're lied to and deceived extensively, and then all of a sudden you can't, it can't be denied anymore. Uh, this is MK Ultra in overdrive against the entire population, and it doesn't need to be that way. We can't, we we can't turn back the clock, but we can clock the future. Yeah, and right, we have charts. Yeah, we have forty three hundred peer review studies every day. Look at we the homepage. Have, Look at yeah. the one picture at the top of rents. Look at the picture at the top of rents. Yeah, you can Dana's picture that. before and after. Look at the picture. Understand that's what's being done to the entire West Coast. It's shocking. All the way up to Alaska and the and the Gulf. All the way. Yeah, it's all missing. And Yoshi knows the soul. The seafood yeah. was such a treasure. And now Yoshi you don't eat seafood no more, you know? Well, the, the sushi restaurants are doing great business in L.A. and San Francisco, I understand. Go ahead. They are, uh, people are very, very foolish. I mean, they're trying to sell beef to foreigners at all the airports in Japan. It's really sickening to see this attempt to mass poison people with radiation from Fukushima long after the meltdown. They're now trying to poison people in other ways. This is really deliberate murder. You know, it's no longer manslaughter. It's murder. It's knowing murder. Now, to follow up on Dana's comment about ignorance, now, one of the things they do is they don't tell us all the facts, of course. And it turns out that the main scientists uh, uh, for the Canadian and U.S. government, the team, you know, the, uh, 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 Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen, well, we looked into their background a little bit more. It was, it was very hidden. Jay Cullen, of course, uh, was connected. He met Buesler at the uh, Woods Hole Institute. So they did know each other, you know, uh, long before, uh -huh. uh, long uh -huh. before for a long time. So Buesler basically handpicked him. Buesler uh, tied in. His background sort of disappears before Fukushima. Uh, the last we know, he was working with the Naval Research Lab after Fukushima uh, to in so-called investigate uh, contamination in the Pacific after the USS Ronald Reagan was massively hit, and a soldier and the sailors sued the U.S. government. So the Navy Research Lab tried to cover up for the Navy and put down its own soldiers. Many of them are dying now. Just an outrage, a crime against American citizens and the bravest and the best of American citizens. But we found out a little bit more about Jay Cullen. And this is what, of course, Dane is not allowed to talk about this, but I am, since I'm not facing trial in Canadian court yet. Um... Jay's hometown is Peterborough, Ontario. Peterborough, Ontario. Aye. And it turns out that the main employer, the main industry of Peterborough, is a uranium uh, uh, fuel rod assembly plant. Fuel oh, assembly no. Plant, <laughs> run by General Electric Hitachi. Oh, the yeah. very same people who built reactors one and two at Fukushima. Well, isn't that an odd coincidence? Shocker. Professor Cullen comes from a company town run by GE Hitachi, the nuclear power. And we've got to ask, does, does, does Canada have a foreign agent law like the U.S. does? If you represent in the United States, there's a foreign uh, agent rep uh, registration law. Uh -huh. If you represent a foreign government, uh -huh. Or an entity, uh, let's, let's say, associated with a government, like Hitachi. Yes. 
you have to register as a foreign agent. You see my point here. Oh, yeah. Is Jay Cullen a foreign agent of the Japanese nuclear industry run by the Ministry of Economy and Industry? Is he an agent of Hitachi GE? Good question. Good yeah, question. And as we know, I told you earlier, Cigar Lake Mine is now producing uranium, which will be distributed by Tokyo Electric Power Company, uh -huh. which is a major shareholder in that, in that mine. And that uranium will be shipped out from the port of Vancouver, where there was a major uranium accident in 2011 on shipments going to China. There was a leak of raw uranium in Vancouver Harbor. Ah. So the question is, isn't it convenient that he's on Vancouver Island at the mouth of Vancouver Harbor, the channel there? Isn't yeah. it so convenient? This professor from Peterborough, the professor from Hitachi GE, who will, is now saying there's no radiation threat to the West Coast, is at the doorway to Vancouver, just as Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, is about to ship uranium from Vancouver to all points uh, across Asia and the Middle East. Wow. Isn't it quite convenient uh, who this guy is? And I would like to know, I'll ask, and I would like uh, uh, the new Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, to launch an inquiry. Is Canada, is the Dominion of Canada, owned by the Japanese nuclear industry and the Ministry of Economy and Industry of Japan? Yes, this is what we need to know. Wow. Wow. And in the meantime... Treason, treason, treason against oh, yeah, the United oh, yeah, States, yeah. Uh, yeah. the sailors of the Ronald Reagan. Treason. People who are dying there, you know, and who well, tried to help the Japanese people, you know, and now treason against Canada. That's so, what we so, have to investigate. So far, Mr. Trudeau has done nothing to indicate that he is even aware of the fact that his country is being covered in radioactivity. Yes, nothing at all. He's the new prime minister. Understandably, Harper, he was sort of like a howdy duty puppet, you know, for the U.S. government. Let's see if Justin Trudeau has any gut, has any uh, integrity, any belief in sovereignty of the people there and the welfare of the people there. And if he can do something to stop this insult. I mean, this is beyond injury. This is an insult to the people of North America, the people of Japan who are suffering and need relief. This is an insult to people all across the Pacific Basin who are being uh, radioactively affected. So uh, exactly. something must be done. But the first thing of all, I think Jay Cullen and Ken Buesler owe us an explanation of who they really are and who they really work for. Couldn't agree with you more. Stand by just a minute. Uh, Yoshi, we have to pause. We'll come right mm -hmm. back. Meanwhile, folks, remember... The Olympics coming up in just four years. And by four years, the amount of radiation in and around Tokyo will be much more hospitable in the reverse sense of the you word the ads to all the visitors. Be right back. Daiichi. We know it's we know it's slowly crumbling. We know it's leaning in the muck. And they built this steel wall to stop the underflow from the mountain behind it. And what happened to the steel wall? It began to crack and bend and lean over under the pressure of the water. Water is the heavyweight champion. It goes where it wants to go. And you put a steel wall in the way, it'll push it right out of the way. Go around it, under it, over it, doesn't matter. So the steel wall, another loser. Yeah, well, that steel wall is hardly a, is hardly a, uh, you know, like the Great Wall of China, anything like that. That failed too, by the way. Uh, this is steel plate. It's called plating. That's a common word that you. Sure. Uh, they usually plate around nuclear dump sites. They drive these huge, like, sheets of steel into the ground. 
And uh, it's not a very effective method. It's just like a, a makeshift method to reduce the amount of radiation leakage. It doesn't stop it. And the water will get right through. It will pass right around it. So they're, they're being cheap. You know, there is a way to store the water is by tunneling. Japan has huge tunnels, okay? They can do the job. They're yeah. not going to spend the money. They're not going to... But because... And the other problem, they're not going to admit there's a real problem. That's the, that's the whole problem. If they're going to spend, let's say... Five hundred million dollars on tunneling into the Abakuma Plateau. It would be an emission situation out of control. It would be a loss of faith. It means they've been lying since three eleven. Okay, so that's it's really all about the political cost, the emissions of of admitting they failed. That's what's really. It's not so much the money. Okay, and they certainly aren't going to act in a responsible way to the world. I'm really concerned that maybe there is some intention behind the. Uh, radioactive uh, contamination of the North Pacific and of uh, the U.S. and Canada, uh-huh. which goes back to World War II. They're building a new MOX plant in the northern tip of Anshu. Uh, it'll be an all-MOX fuel plant. If that goes up, it'll be like the second nuclear bomb against North America. And we know the number two means something in the world of nuclear revenge. So I'm really concerned uh-huh. if these people aren't just a bunch of maniacs bent on destruction yeah. of the United States and Canada you know, seven years after the end of World War II. So it's a real question. And, and as you said, the Olympics, uh, the town of Kamakura, a pleasant old tourist town on the Mural Peninsula, south of Tokyo, near uh, south of Yogama, yeah. it's near the mouth of the Tokyo Bay. The radiation readings there, and this is Fukushima Diary reported on this one, uh-huh. uh, they reported six, in one schoolyard, six times the uh, previous level of radiation. So radiation definitely building up from the rainfall crossing the trench, but also probably from the water coming out of Tokyo Bay. You know, circulates around, circulates on, dribbles out, high concentration. Uh, Tokyo Bay, I was down there uh, doing readings this last Sunday, and, uh, still massively radioactive as ever. You know, the situation. And I did visit that aquarium where all the tuna died. Oh, yeah? So they replaced the tuna. Yeah, they replaced the tuna. Um, and, uh, uh, but, you know, I had to get down there and take a look at it. And uh, looked at this radioactive island. It's called the Forest of the Sea, Umi no Mori, which will be used for uh, Olympic equestrian events and mountain biking. Uh, they're planting trees there, but that area also, you can't visit there yet, but uh, I got some scenes of the construction there. Highly radioactive. You don't see a lot of workers on site. Everything is being done by these gigantic cranes from a distance. Oh, they, they so they're, okay, they're, excuse me, they're already, they're already building the venues for the Olympics already? Well, this is, yeah, an outdoor, it's an artificial hill uh, on this uh, radioactive. This is where most of the ra- uh, radioactive material that was burned at this one major incinerator. But, uh, oh, the other incinerator. very this, smart. It was built, there's a whole layer, like maybe 30 feet of radioactive ash. Then they covered it with uh, uh, dirt from the bay and dirt from other places. And then they're trying to cover it with trees. But I noticed there's no workers walking on the ground there. Oh, and you got I mean, pictures of that. Are you going to write this up? Can we put pictures up? Yeah, 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 absolutely. No problem. No problem. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but Tokyo, highly radioactive. This Olympics is doomed, you know. Uh, well, the, uh, you know, the, the Olympics of death. Still, yeah. Yeah, still radioactive. Still people, kids out there, all those wear, you know, because they're athletic. They're in shorts and T-shirts. You know, and it's, these are radioactive places, you know, double the safety level. Uh, the beach, beach volleyball place remains three times the uh, uh, safety level, okay? So you have, you know, girls in bikinis out there. And this, these, are, these, these places are not beautiful places. You can see docks, you know, millions of containers, uh, industrial sites, uh, waste sites from these Olympic venues. These are all islands built from garbage and uh, nuclear waste, chemical waste. Wow. Terrible place, you know? It's wow. ugly, it's, it's, it's contaminated, and there's radiation massive. It's like a whole... Uh, and, and the river is also drained down there. The Edo Gallup, uh, massive amount of contamination coming uh, in the water and in the sediment. You know, they try to stop the sediment, but it's still coming through. The place is dead. Now it's leaching out of Tokyo Bay, and it's killing the children in Kamakura. I mean, it's in their schoolyard. Kamakura is on the peninsula. It's surrounded by water out of Tokyo Bay. And it's six times the level since, you know, uh, higher than the previous uh, years. We, we know Tokyo, Asby Brown from um, SafeCast has come out and said that there was no, now, he's one of the big speakers apparently with SafeCast, which tests his Tokyo drinking water. Uh-huh. He said there was no radiation in drinking water, but he only talks about iodine-131. 
and sometimes cesium. And so here's a person that is easy to disprove because if you go back and look at the original headlines, Tokyo had was passing out drinking water, right, Yoshi, for the babies and that. And so the radiation doesn't turn the fairy dust overnight. That was the end of it right there. And But they've been dumping it in the bay. It comes around that uh, coastline anyway. And if you look at the dispersal waters along the coastline of Japan, they don't necessarily go straight out to the Kurosha current. A lot of the times it goes right up the coastline past Tokyo. And that's like the inshore models of the tidal zones, uh, the tidal uh, currents. And that the local winds, of course, with the rain and convection, evaporation and snow, is re-liberating it throughout the mountains. So it's going to wash into the mountains, down the lakes, the rivers, the streams, down past Tokyo again, and everywhere else in Japan. And, but how can you have Olympics? How can anybody have Olympics in a place like that? How can they keep posturing that they're going to do it, and then nobody else will be able to get ready, and they might be forced to do it there? I can't see them doing it there, Yoshi, like you're saying. That is the most ludicrous yeah. thing imaginable. Go ahead. Yeah, people, I, there are several people I met in Tokyo, and they all said the same thing. The public opinion there, the Tokyo Olympics will be the last Olympics. Once the world wakes up to what happened to the athletes who came to Tokyo, drank the radioactive water, bathed in it, ate the radioactive food, and you know, basically the rains every day will be drenched in radioactivity, that there will never be an Olympics again. There will be no trust behind the International Olympic Committee. So this is going to be a common viewpoint in Tokyo. Uh, the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, uh, they're calling it the last Olympic. It's going wow. to totally discredit the Olympic movement. You know, these are residents <laughs> of Tokyo. Just you know, the residents of Tokyo are very depressed about what's happened to their lives in that city. And they know there is contaminated. And Shinjuku, which is the Manhattan of Tokyo, the water company there, the, the municipal bureau there, has admitted there's radiation in the drinking water. This is like the Wall Street. Uh, Shinjuku is the Wall Street of Japan, and they know their water is radioactive. The only war in the whole city, there's 23 ward, uh, districts in the city, only one admits to the fact, and that's the most important district of all. That's where all the wealth in Tokyo is. They admit there's water, radiation in their water. That's extraordinary. Hopeless. The world has got to wake up. They've got to get out of their Paris dreams and into Tokyo reality and start dealing. You know, we can no longer cover up for Tokyo Electric Power in Japan, in Wall Street, or in Canada. We've got to deal with these problems. Now, right. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, in the fifth year is coming up. By then, really, there's not much. You know, I, I, we're, we're really seeing a total situation of loss. There's still things that can be done. But, you know, time's not going to wait for these people. They've got to wake up. And let's hope the next president of the United States, let's hope the, the man who succeeds uh, Barack Obama does recognize, come to admission, something is fatally, tragically wrong uh, at Fukushima. The GE has to be held responsible. Westinghouse must be held responsible yeah. for their crimes against humanity. But these are crimes against humanity. They're crimes against yeah. the planet. They, kill, they may have killed the planet off. Okay. We just don't know. We don't know how bad. There won't be any whales left in another year or two. They're gone. Well, Jeff, you're the one who's reported these massive spikes in radiation uh, hitting Phoenix, parts of Oregon. Yeah. And Bob Nichols, he told me there's a very likelihood that these are massive. Uh, this is massive fallout from the upper atmosphere. That the uh, radiation that's been released since uh, uh -huh. the atomic testing, now Fukushima, Chernobyl, uh -huh. has so affected the uh, upper atmosphere in North America or the northern hemisphere uh -huh. that basically the uh, ionosphere stratosphere can't hold. That basically uh, that radiation which is circulating around the planet is breaking through. We're seeing intense northern, uh, you know, uh, bo borealis, you know, northern light activity. Uh, we're seeing a weakening of uh, radio signals of the electromagnetic uh, uh, belts around around the northern hemisphere. So basically, you know, Chicken I've told you before, Chicken Little was right. The sky is falling, and it's falling in radiation uh, in certain places in America. Well, Bob is a voice to be listened to. Uh, thank you, Dana. Go get some yeah. sleep. You, uh, Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for you and go right. and everybody yes, else. Thank you, Dana. Yeah. Thank you. We wish you well Hello. against this uh, kangaroo court. We wish you well. <laughs> Bless you, Yoshi. Good night, everyone. Good night.